weekend all. I wrap scene and here we are with your weekend edition of your spider ETF stock market wrap up. And this is for Friday, the 12th of uh, July, 2024. And I'm going to take some time off for myself. I'm gonna be gone at least a week. I don't think it'll be more than that, but I, I will be gone for a week. And uh, if it's longer, I will let you know, I doubt it, but uh, I, I go nuts after a week, that is why. So I, I, I fly where I'm going and uh, my wife will stay, I come back, I, I just go to work. That's very typical. And we fight about it, why don't I stay longer? But it's my nature, all right. So as, as we look at the markets and what they're doing, this was a week of the trifecta that could have been, but wasn't. What do I mean by that? Well. We did get a labor report that showed weakening. Okay, I think you'd agree the jobs report showed that. I think you'd agree with me the CPI report uh, surprised the market and showing a lot more weakness coming into inflation numbers than we thought, boom. But today's PPI, no, showed more strength, the opposite. So we didn't get the trifecta, we got two out of three. Did it stop the markets from having a lot of volatility? Not at all. If you take a look at my futures, I show you how many points. I mean, you had 400 point range in uh, some of the, I think it was both the, I know it was in the Dow, and you had big moves in all the others, up and down. It was pretty crazy during the day. I think part of it's the thinness of the market. I think it's the day after. I think part of it has to do with the marketplace on the rotation that took place yesterday, Thursday that we saw all of a sudden the Russell come alive in the Dow at the expense for one day of the S&P and the NASDAQ. I wanna repeat, for one day. Today, everything came back. So now the question is, was that the breakout number in the Russell or not? For the week, it was. For the week, you need one more week, and I explain on the futures one how that comes about, and then I'm in that camp that yes, we've seen the real change. Do you know how many times we've been frustrated by the market coming up, though, like it is, and it backs off? All right, so those are the things I'm looking at. When you look at NVIDIA, still hanging here in the 130 level. We saw some weakness come into Microsoft, which I welcome, because I, I, I think longer term you want to own that. Uh, we are looking at FCX drop down a bit. Of, I, want, I, I like the idea of owning down the road here, the XLC, so I'm looking at that pretty hard as well. Uh, and we had a lot of green. In fact, even Tesla up another big day after they said, well, we can't deliver our RoboForm, our, not RoboForm, our RoboTaxi, RoboTaxi information out to you because we're going to build some more models and we need until October to do it, okay? Um, we've waited this long and the market's not upset with that. That was surprising to me. And you could see the range in the market was pretty big today. That's an $18 range. I mean, that's not a little bitty range in any sense of the matter that it's got. Uh, and, you know, when we look at most of the markets, they don't have anything like that. When we look at the gold market, and I do think gold is one of these markets that is looking at inflation, it's saying it's not gonna do what the Fed thinks in a big way anytime soon. And we may actually see inflation pick up because as other economies that are cutting rates try to spur their economies on, the idea there is once you get the economy rolling and stop the, the nosedive some have been in, you'll get demand for goods and that adds to inflationary pressures, period. We know that in Japan, they're looking to see the inflationary pa uh, packages that come about because of the labor unions, that how they negotiate. They do it all at one time for the autos and so on. And now we're seeing the first numbers hit up and they're, they're providing that. Well, this is what you look at. We're into an area where we've been here, done this, and the question is, can the market break out or not? When we look at the swing line, we have a pattern of a lower low and a higher high, okay? But the market is staying over the 18-week average of closes. So I look at the market as a filter for bias. Bias, I am bullish when the market's over the red line. I have a bearish bias when you're under it. And if you go back and you put it on your chart, I think you'll find simplicity is a pretty cool thing. 
when you get a correction, often you'll find that you go to this 18-day average and you fight a battle there for bias. You fell here, you did your battle, you came up, you fought it, and when you finally got over it, you stayed over it on the next move. And those are the important things in how I use it. Now, if we keep going up, one of the numbers I look at for the resistance is going to be 227.80, the upper Bollinger Band. Why? Because markets only stay over or under these black dashed lines, the Bollinger Band, 5% of the time. Can they run them? Absolutely. But when they run them is typically, there, there's always exceptions, but typically after the bands have narrowed in quite a bit. This is not what I call quite a bit of narrowing in. So I think that could be a resistance area. Are there other events that can cause it? Of course, what if the United States got attacked in some manner? Gold would take off to the upside as people would want the wealth that it provides and who knows how many days it would be there. I'm making this up, but I'm, I'm giving you a point. When we take a look here, you're getting overbought. I view any in momentum, any numbers that are over 70 in the slow stochastic, it's made up of two numbers called the K and the D line. The K is the same identical formula, but using three time frames. A time frame is what you have on the chart. This is a weekly chart, so it's a weekly bar. The other, the D, is five. Now, I modify my slow stochastics. I don't use the same formula that they do. I modified it years ago, went to George Lane who developed this. I believe he was the, the godfather of this whole thing. I tried to find out what a stochastic was and when he tried to explain it to me, I didn't understand it then. I don't understand it now. I just call it the momentum indicator. And I showed him that I, I think I found something that's a little better in, in, in the formula. And we worked at it and he said, you know, it's not a bad thing. But it, as you know, there are many people that develop techniques and you take them, you can make them better. You know how many different types of moving averages there are? Weighted, exponential, simple, I can go on and on. So you come up here, you've got your momentum as I view it is overbought. So I would say if you get to 227.80, there, you'd be met by some resistance up there. RSP. Is this going to finally join the party? Now, you know that the non-weighted S&P has been a dog. You've watched the weighted, which is the S&P 500 index, go up and make record highs how often? You're not doing that in this market. But is this where it can come alive and break out of this and finally come alive? That means that there's a broadening in the market if that takes place. That's why the Russell came alive. Yesterday was the broadening event. Was it a one day event or more? That's what we need to find out. In Lilly, you know, this is just owning the best of the best in a drug company. You want to buy the brakes, you want to hold it, you want to forget you own it. It's sort of like NVIDIA. Until there's a reason not to own it, you want to just forget it. You don't want to trade it, you just want to be in there. So I keep covering it because on good breaks, I think it's an opportunity. Now Dell has, if you will, stalled for quite a while here. You've got a pattern where I think you can see on my blue arrows, you got higher lows, but you certainly have lower highs. So you've narrowed in and finally, we're getting back into narrowing in enough where something can happen. When you get narrow bands, remember you were over here, how narrow? This is the same, just scaling it back. Price went from 50 to 158, that is why the scaling made that so thin. But those bands had narrowed in dramatically. Well, we need these to narrow in a little bit more. Can this chart turn bearish? Let me give you the answer. Yes, if it gets underneath last week's low and closes under 130.96, then you could be opening the door to come down here. In order to stay here, you've got to stay above the 18-day average, ideally narrow in the bands, and then we look for a potential breakout to the upside. In arm holdings, you can see how the market's been running the upper Bollinger Band. This is a relatively new listing, bing. It's trying to embed. Let it do its thing, and then on pullbacks, you start again the buying mode. Meta went right up to the upper Bollinger Band two weeks in a row and ran into that problem that I keep telling you about. Overbought, not embedded, coming back here. Uh, I don't see it getting into a bear trend. I want to make that clear. I can see corrections back and forth in a battle at the 18-day average or lower. KRE came alive. 
As soon as the CPI number hit, this market just jumped on board and it's trying to say, I can stay over the upper band. I'm in a breakout mode. It needs to get one more week now, this coming week, where you make a higher high than this week and like this, close literally at the top part of the range, higher on the week. That would be a breakout. If it pulls back in here, you haven't broken out yet. It's a nice move to the upside, but again into the 100 day in the upper band. I think the pros took money off the table up there. It's got to prove itself this week. In MCHI, for the first time, I'm seeing a buy signal hit this market. Higher lows, higher highs. I think the pros are going to buy it with stops under this week's low, looking to see, on a pullback that is, looking to see how far this market might go. The first stopping spot is right here, 44.48, the 100-week average. Tell me where you went to a high today. Well, this week, you got to 44.49. XLI, trying to come alive to the upside, and narrow Bollinger Band. So these markets that are narrowing their bands, they could go a lot further because they'll have the energy to do so with the consolidation if they can break out to the upside. Right now, you're just back and forth here. You get a, tie, a week over the band, uh, the 18-week average, then you pull back under. If it can keep going, look for 126.71 to be your next stopping spot. Energy. Energy's been coming down. The next support, if it stays in the downtrend, 87.56 to 86.19. To break the downtrend, the pattern needs to see the market get over. Right through here, 90.18. If it can get over that and close over it, you turn the pattern and you're back to bullish. So close, not quite there. Uh, did I say 90.18? I'm sorry, I did that wrong. 92.71 is the 18-day average. You got to get over that. That's the number you got to close over. I gave you the wrong one there. In UUP, trend up or is it going to stay up? That's the big question. The futures have turned down. So now this market's into key support at 28.69 down to 2860. If you take out 2851, you're out of your uptrend. What should the market have done? Did you lose an embedded reading? Stay with me, I'll show you. Here's the market on the week of July 5th, last week. You have an 80 reading. This week, you're down, and the 18, you, you now have the market under seven, under 79, so I'm looking for the 18-week average, I gotta tell you. You already hit it today. So it's hit its target is my point. It can go lower, but it has hit the target. In GDX, now in all the miners, they're at a key point, one after the other. I was looking at them all. They are up at their upper Bollinger Bands and overbought. So they're very important. The COPX is a bit different here because it's been in a downtrend, but I'm talking the silver miners, the gold miners that I watch. And when I put it together, I see problems that have developed. These are just blank uh, pages that I have back there as you define the charts. So I want to remind you that if you want our free offers, they're simple to get. You go to irapstein.com, free offers. The whole list is there. I'm Ira. Had a screw up on the back there, but I'm done. I'm on vacation. I will catch you all in a week or so. You have yourself a good one. Take care.